The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the April 17th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, D.B. Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but most importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, you can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And in the Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow trading up seven points, 26,459. S&P's off four. NASDAQ up 28. Russell down 14. That's the big loser to the downside, off nearly 1%. The semis are the big. Semis and transports kind of neck and neck, each up one and a quarter percent, 19 and 138 points, respectively. So we've got a, a mixed market, to say the least. Gold's off a buck 40. Silver's up a penny. A light sweet crude is down nine cents. Uh, leading the charge, the upside, it is Domino's Pizza. DPZ up 4%, up 11 bucks. Google's up eight. Qualcomm is up seven. We're going to start there because one of our listeners, Larry T, LT is what we're going to call him. He's fortunate enough to be long Qualcomm and uh, was just simply asking for potential price projections. And I'm a swing trader by considering holding long term from Eden Prairie, Minnesota out there. So let's go take a look at Qualcomm. And so you mentioned long term. So let's take a look at the long term chart and see what it says. Let's look at the monthly time frame. So, Larry, here's what you know. Here's what we know. Here's what traders know. The last time that uh, Qualcomm had resistance, it was up here in July of 2014. July of 2014 was actually a key reversal session out here. That meant that the prior month's high and low was exceeded and that that price closed in the opposite direction of the trend out there. 81.97, let me just make sure I grab the right, uh, 81.97 is it. Now, if you take a look at the high so far today, the high is 82.52. So this is a classic 100% move of a move the question is will price so larry you and i know why price has stopped where it has the question is will it be able to take out those highs now look volume metric wise the volume back in july of 2014 was 218 million it's only april 17th you're at 328 million chances are even if it doesn't bust through 8197 it's going to be retested however what i've added to this chart here the white horizontal lines are your monthly because it's a monthly chart we're looking at they're your monthly horizontal uh, your monthly excuse me TAS market profiles but I've also added the quarterly and the quarterly yes the quarterly doesn't end but just trying to understand that $78 even Stephen and we're at 78 10 as we speak right now is a real resistance level out there the question really that you're asking for is can Qualcomm make the larger 100% move of a move can it get buck can it get buck or back to 100 buck even Steven out there? I don't know the answer to that. What I can say is that, my goodness, you have gotten a nice run, a nice gift, winner, winner, lobster dinner 
out here. Do I see a topping pattern per se out here? If I look at the daily time frame, no, just signs of strength, wide ranging bars, gaps to the upside. But at the same point in time, LT, it has been winner, winner, lobster dinner. If price wasn't sitting there at that resistance, hadn't test 8197, maybe we'd have a different call out here. But right now, man, that was a uh, that's been a nice trade. Uh, not saying that you don't want to hold this long term, but um, uh, if it's me, I guess you're kind of getting you're kind of getting the gist here. Go go buy a nice lobster dinner. Go get some a nice sushi meal. Get a great bottle of sake or cabernet or or just simply uh, just put the money uh, away out there. Here's what you can do, right? And this is this is a this is an Obi Wan Kenobi trick out there. Take all your principal off the table, right? So go ahead, sell what you've got, get that principal back, and let the profits ride. If you want to just kind of think about sticking the drawer and let it ride, you know, go for it. But uh, you're up at a resistance level that is held before, and no idea if it's going to hold again. So hope that helps you out. And that was with uh, that was for Qualcomm out here. I see that uh, Chris B writes in. Chris writes in, and he's long S R C I. So we want to go ahead and type in S R C I. See what in the heck that is. We'll do the same thing. Take a look at its three different time frames for daily, weekly, monthly profiles. But let's finish reading uh, Chris's question. So he said uh, he's long, bought, uh, which he bought today, okay. And uh, looking at the chart, it has made a nice bottom in, on February 1st. Okay, I can see the nice bottom out there. Uh, how high do you think this can go? I calculate the point three eight two retracement at $7.50. Do you think it go higher like the 9 to 11.40 or even 13 buckaroonie area out here? Well, here's what we know right now, Chris, uh, just looking at these charts, is that uh, price is above the uh, daily and the weekly profiles out here. So that looks pretty good. Um, because once you're above that resistance, and I don't have a new profile out here uh, to provide to you. So just with regard to your figures, it's not that I'm going to ignore your email out here. I'm just going to open up the chart. And your question was, I think one of your questions was, you know, how high can this head to? So the next level, there's really kind of, I'll give you the range, next level of resistance out here. Now, we haven't gone to take a look at my other charts to try to identify um, uh, some type of potential topping pattern. We're going to do that here in, in a moment. But uh, as far as upper threshold price targets that this could be targeting are these swing points in the 883 to 925 level out there. And I know you had mentioned nine, so that kind of qualifies. 1140, I think you're going back even further. We've got to take this one step at a time out here. Am I concerned about today's candle? No, I'm not. It's not a bearish uh, candle, not just yet. It could be dependent on the close. But let's go ahead and pull over SRCI. Let's get the current data out here. And, uh, oh, I didn't, I, I guess I missed yesterday's candle. So yesterday's candle out here was a bearish reversal signal with price movement higher doing less relative energy out there. And today was a test of that high. That's the shooting star candle. And it just says, okay, caution, Will Robinson, you could see a pullback. In other words, today probably wasn't the right day to buy it. Did price make a nice bottom back in February after it retested a prior low, after it retested that Tommy DeMarc set up trend line? Yes, it, yes, it did. But right now, it's very possible that SRCI is going to pull back and at least test TV's green line at 613. See Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the next question that came in from the Tiger's Den uh, is coming in from uh, Mr. Z. Question is, is this is this move lower in IYR? IYR is the real estate sector uh, with inside the S&P 500. Is it a sign of a top in place as you see it? Now, are you referring to just simply the IYR? It is Z. Or are you referring to a top in place with regard to the S&P 500 and its correlation? To the S and P leading indicator, I'm not sure. I, I don't want to overread it, um, but uh, uh, just a top in the I Y R. Okay, so let's go take a look at that, that possibility. So let's begin by taking a look at since that's the E T F. The real estate sector represents about three percent, give or take. I, I know it's in that range out there with the with inside the S&P 500. Here's what we know right now, just in looking at market profile information. Let me just expand out on the uh, daily time frame. And the pullback so far over the last couple of days, again, it's a daily time frame we're looking at, has pulled back to one possible support level. That possible support level is the top of its daily profile, which it had broken above back on uh, March the 11th. So old resistance uh, becomes new support, and that level is 84.86. Uh, what we can see here is it's only tested the top of the profile. It has not gotten down to the bottom or close below the bottom. It would be easier for me to say to you that this would be a clear change in trend if we had to close below the bottom of that daily profile. Now, that's obviously a bit of a lagging indicator, but you're asking me to answer the question, is the move lower in IYR a sign of a top in place? as we see it, not as of April 17th, because as of April 17th at 1.20 in the afternoon, price just simply pulled back to test a, a key level of support after making a 52-week high 
three days ago. So that's what that says. Now, let's look at the daily time frame chart with Stevie's other tools and take a look at the high that it did make or how did it make that high. And at this stage here, we can see that a few days ago, let me get my crosshair out here. My crosshair says specifically uh, when this little doji candle formed out here on April 12th, a price is moving higher doing less relative energy out there. We've had a couple of bearish reversal signals up in this area here towards its all-time or its 52-week high, I should say, maybe the all-time high as well. Um, but we can see that the, the bears have shown up uh, strength the relative strength, it's, it's gotten weaker, and uh, you've got that uh, dark cloud cover. It's a bearish reversal signal back here on April 16th, and it's moved lower. And so far at this stage, if we just looked at this, price has pulled back to a level of support. Now, I don't have the market profiles on here. What I do have on this chart here is the Tommy DeMarc setup trend count. And the next level of support for it, or its level of support, I should say, is 80. 8298. Where's 8298? It's pretty close to 8365. I know not exactly, but it's fairly close out there. I believe you would have to see. So you got the topping signal in place. By topping signal, I mean that you're going to see some type of retracement. Could extend to be more than that. No doubt about it. But right now, no levels of no key levels of support have actually broken inside the real estate sector. However, what we can see as we speak right now, and the week is not over, we have one more trading day, that is tomorrow. Price is trading below the top of the weekly profile, and that's 85.33. So come tomorrow, I'd watch to see, you know, is price above 84.86? Really, I'd say 85.33 would be the more clear uh, signal if it, if it was. The, if it is above that, then we don't have a we don't have a uh, conviction signal. It's just some term I've made up there. Um, if it's below 84.86, so it's back inside the box. We've we had an 82 dollar figure. We got 83.65, and the bottom of the weekly would be 82.11, and that would say that price would actually pull back there. Now on a monthly basis, and the month is not over. It ain't over till it's over. Well, we can see the last times, the last few times that price has been up in this area here. Um, we can see that bears, that price has been moving higher, doing less relative energy, monthly basis. You've got bearish reversal candles. We don't know if this will be a monthly bearish reversal signal. But it certainly is giving us signs that it is a top. Is it a major top? I just need to see a level of support uh, broken. Really similar. So here's the IYR that you and I have been taking a look at. Um, uh, da, 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 is, is, oh, okay, uh, we do have a caller on the line. So, uh, so Mr. Z, that's what I see. I'll segue that into the ES Mini after we go to our next caller that's on the line, and that is Ron in Denver. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Uh, very nice, Steve, and thank you for that information on Qualcomm because I did it at 100 shares. I bought about three years ago, and they went through that buyout deal, and I missed it, and it came back down. So I, I will take your advice and get out now. Yeah, but, yeah uh, I mean, it, it could go but, higher. It's just kind of we look at the charts. We say, hey, you know, this thing is, one, it's had obviously a great run in the last uh, 20, 48 hours, and it's up yeah. at a place where there has been previous resistance, you know. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. Take your, no, take the, I, take I agree. I'm no. I'm gonna. I'm take my profits to run on that. That's a long term. Usually, a lot longer term. And I usually hold. Uh, okay. I, I'd like to mention one stock that I am buying today and why, and I'd like to get your thoughts on it. And Similar. that's Aramco. Uh, I'm not Aramco. Antero Resources. It's AR. Okay. Go ahead. And and the reason I is so you look on the news on it. They init They say they initiated a dividend, and they're going to uh, for. 0 0.3025, and it goes to stockholders' record on 426. Okay. So you go back about four days, I guess, for X dividend date. Right. But that's a good dividend if they maintain that for the quarterly over the year. And then they also there was some insider buying, and so I thought this would be to me, I think, a good long term for me, a good long term buy. And I just wonder what your thoughts were. So you need some insiders to buy a bit more. So give them a call, would you? You can you can find them on the internet. But let's take okay, a look well, at the somewhere daily. Somewhere in there, I saw it insider buy. I don't know how much it was or what. Sure, I sure, 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 sure. Well, look, when it made a bottom back here on March the twelfth, it uh, was moving lower with less relative energy. This is a daily time frame. This thing gapped up on the following day. That's your bullish reversal signal here. Um, and so it, it's it shows you that it is trying to form a bottom. But really, ever since then, or about five days after that, it has just been trading sideways. It has not really been able to take out 
on this chart here, any clear levels of resistance. Now, if we come back and we take a look at this daily time frame and we take a look at its TAS market profiles on the daily basis, there's no clear level of resistance that it has taken out. 905, which is the center of the uh, box out there, run, is a uh, is, is an area because this is a bearish structured box where sellers are lined up in addition to those at the 941 level. But 905 is actually held as resistance here. Um, look, you have a you can you can can see some rising bottoms out here you can see some rising tops so it's not as if I'm seeing a a sign here that says you know you need to exit or anything um, but price we, we it, what it doesn't really have that you would love to see is a sign of strength off of the bottom some type of wide price spread and accelerated volume doesn't have that doesn't mean it won't get it um, but it's trading below the weekly resistance level. That's 928. So as you stay within this, as long as price continues to uh, move higher, you know, you've got 905 to look at. You have 928 to look at. And you also have 941 unless the profiles change. So, um, again, I don't see a reason for, for me to say, hey, bad move. No excitement. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I got in for the dividend, and we'll see what happens over, over time okay. if people like that. You know, Sounds great. Uh, we'll see how great. solid that dividend is. Sounds great. Thanks for calling. That yep, was thanks. Ron Bye. in Denver. That was Antero Resources AR. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go on to our next request out here. This is from Ruby inside the Tiger's Den, who wants to take a look at uh, Palladium and Platinum. Uh, the chart that I have up on my screen, if you watch us on Tiger TV, you're like, oh, where's price? And uh, the reason that I've turned price off at this stage, specifically for Ruby, is because there's a brand new TAS market profile that formed today. And by daily, I'm referring to the blue horizontal lines out here. So, Ruby, what I want you to be aware of is that this was a bullish structured profile. The bottom was 13. 30. The uh, center was 1342 and the top is 1371.50. Now, Ruby is long. Let me turn price back on. What you're going to see is that price is trading above the top of the daily box right now, which is 1371.50. We talked about that. It's trading at 1379.20. So that is a, a nice bullish uh, message here. You'd love to see this close above 1371.50 today. If it does so, uh, then that is the first close above the top of a uh, profile for, um, you know, several weeks out here. And so that would say, okay, change in trend, uh, in fact, may have occurred inside the plating. Now, the next move for it, uh, assuming that it stays above the top of that profile, would be the bottom of the weekly profile. And the bottom of the weekly box is 1438, so 1379. I would say that is your next um, target area uh, inside of Palladium. On the 60, the 120, the 240 minute time frame charts, nothing out there to really make you aware. If we take a look at Platinum out here, uh, let's go see what its message is. And we're primarily right now just looking at the uh, daily. So in the daily time frame, what we can see is that uh, price is above both the daily and the weekly, but we've seen price pull back out here. So the question becomes, what happened? Let me see if I can. I may have to pull up on my other charts the, uh, the continuous contract, but that's okay. It'll at least give us the, uh, the, the patterns or the potential patterns. I'm just trying to find that right now. Do I have? I do not. I've only got April of 2019, and I know that is not the current contract. So let's put up the let's put up the uh, continuous contract and try to figure out, Ruby, what happened up at the, that high. If we can if we can find anything. So here we go with this chart. Now we know you and I know that when instruments make highs or lows. Regardless of the time frame, regardless of the instrument, uh, it typically does so with a handful of patterns. One of those patterns is the Rhodes Momentum Indicator Signal. And uh, what Ruby or what Platinum generated out here on April 9th was a confirmed uh, at least short-term top. Uh, you got that. And then price, the next target. So the first target here was its uh, Stevie Green line, its oscillator and change line. And a few days ago, uh, we got a close below that level on April the 15th. Uh, right now, it appears to be doing a uh, Tom DeMarc set up a nine count to the downside here. Although we don't know that we're only in day four. We can't label today's um, we can't we can't generate a label today until the end of the session is done. But it does look like what Platinum wants to do because of that top is pulled back to another level of support. So once it gets below Stevie's green line, uh, in this case here, we can go to the TAS market profiles. So that's going to be either 874.40 or 865.20 as the target, the top of the daily or the top of the weekly box out there. So, Ruby, that's what I see when I take a look at the daily time frame charts here for uh, Platinum, and I hope that that uh, helps you out. So uh, thanks for writing in. Much appreciated. We've got some other questions out here as well. Uh, was there any in the Tiger's Den? It's so easy for me to overlook those. I don't think there was. I think I've gotten everything out of the den. But, uh, well, I take that back. I know Jay wanted to. Jay, hold on, uh, because let me take care of these other questions, and then I'll come back to the ES Mini, both for Peter and for for for, um, for Jay. And, uh, you know, I've got this uh, this kind of very advanced warning indicator tool that I use to identify if a new profile is trying to form. And at 11 o'clock, there was a new one, Jay, that was uh, trying to form inside the ES Mini. We're going to use that with regard to today's close and the importance of today's close, perhaps. Uh, so we'll get, we'll get to that. Let me get to like John F. here in Sarasota. He writes in, and John wants to know, do I stay with uh, Mercado Libre? M-E-L-I is the uh, ticker symbol out here. And M-E-L-I, let's go take a look, see what it's doing. So, John, it's uh, 
you know it's it's trading above it's trading with inside its daily profile no problem there the problem would come if you saw a close below 481.78 trading within a new weekly profile no big deal here um you know the big deal would be a close below 481.78 would bring you to the 476 or the 425 level that's not our call just yet if we bring over our other chart uh, where we can really see the topping signals out here it was on the trading session of April 12th. So price had been moving higher. It would been doing it with less relative energy, but the bearish reversal candle in Mercado Libre took place on April the 12th. And price is below Stevie's green line, 523.36. Says more of a retracement uh, could be or should be in order. So what you're going to, I would say, I don't know where you're in from. And you say, stay with it. You know, if you've been in this for a long time, you had such a sign of strength out here on uh, February 27th, I would want to see this break support. And right now, that would mean a close below 481.78 before you got out. Price should get back to 481.78 based upon the topping signals that you and I had looked at on that uh, other daily chart out there. But that's what I see when I take a look at uh, Mercado Libre. You were also asking about ticker symbol IONS which is a pharmaceutical company here, and that has had a huge sell-off today, as has the entire healthcare sector and many others. So if the question is, you know, should you stay in this uh, equity out here, this is coming down with volume. So you do not like what you saw today. Now, the question becomes, this thing had a, a breakout. Let's go identify where that breakout is. We'll put some yellow lines out here. You're going to see the top of the breakout, that wide price spread accelerated volume was at 72.20. Even though the breakout day was February 27th and the low there was, well, I don't know what it was. Let me tell you what it was. The low there was uh, 62.49. I really have 56.98 as a place where, the, to me, that's where the breakout really began at the 56.98. So as long as it's below 72.20, pulling back to 56.98 is in the cards. At 56.77, pretty darn close there, that's the top of the weekly profile. 60.92 is the top of the uh, monthly. So I... O N S. It formed a top just like we looked at. So Rhodes Momentum Indicator topping signal. That was on April 10th out here. That's when that bearish sash candle. We've seen several bearish reversal signals protecting the highs. It just tells you, John, that sellers are hanging out there. What you can do if you're in this is wait for, see if this closes today before. So last bastion of hope out there. Um, is that uh, Tommy DeMarc set up trend line that began on the trading session, the low of March the 12th. That low was 71 bucks, even Steven. If that gives way, this thing is pulling back uh, further. Um, and we have the price targets. Whether it gets those price targets or not, I can't say. So you've got your last bastion of hope out there. I will also say this could be a longer term uh, pullback, a longer term top. And the reason is because it looks like the month of April will be the nine count of the longer term Tommy DeMarc set up a nine count pattern that is out there. So um, I would just be careful inside of this uh, specific uh, stock, probably the entire sector until we see some type of decent bottoming pattern out there. So, John, thanks for writing in. When we get back, we'll take a look at uh, we'll go take a look at that ES Mini. Then we'll get to uh, Brent in uh, California, Earl, and it looks like Gas Buddy. I don't know who Gas Buddy is, but we'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Okay, Spanky and our gang, let's go take a look at the ES Mini out here. Now, we've got the June contract up on our chart. Again, I don't have price because I, I want to be able to more easily, which is terrible grammar out there, but you kind of get what I'm getting at. Uh, I want you to be able to uh, see more clearly the new profile that is formed out there. I can't eliminate the prior ones. There's probably a way I just don't know how to do it. Uh, and we're not going to worry about doing it. But you can see here, Jay, now I can't guarantee that this is a profile that is going to cement itself. But right now, it's trying to form. And the new daily profile, pretty much neutral in nature, meaning the center at 2900 is pretty much in the center because the top is 2918 and the bottom is 2881. 88, but really 75. So 2881 is the number that we'll use out here. Now, go ahead and put price back on. And the reason why this is important is if you take a look at the bar, today's bar, what you'll notice is that yesterday's high was pierced and yesterday's low was pierced. And that sets up the potential for a key reversal session. In other words, a top. Now, is that important? Well, if we take a look at the ES Mini, we just took a look at several charts that uh, show topping signals using that Rhodes Momentum Indicator pattern out there. And that is in play as we speak right now. So as long as the ES Mini closes one tick in the lower direction, one tick, that's all, 0.25, it would it would confirm a it would confirm a key reversal session. Now, key reversal session is coming at an extension. Uh, it, the extensions here we've got an A to B equal CD to the upside. Nearly hit, not exactly, but 29.29. We've got wave number seven. That's letter G. We've got price moving higher, doing less relative energy. So you got three. Take out uh, three uh, potential topping signals with the potential of a. Uh, topping uh, candle today. I won't know till the day's end. You won't know till the day's end out there. So you've got to wait. Now, what we can also see is on this chart here, it's not going to pick up that new profile that you and I looked at. Uh, 2900 happens to be so it's the old profile. It's the old top of the box. In essence, that's what's been tested. How are we going to know if there's been a change in trend? Similar to like our discussion here when we take a look at the IYR. 
uh, the real estate sector. We really don't know if there's a change in trend. I mean, you can look at the CES Mini. You can see that the bottom of every profile has uh, held, even though it's been tested. It was tested, for example, in March, uh, March 8, 2019. It was, uh, of course, 2019. March 25th, March 27th. March 28th out there. Each time was a, each time people might have been you know, thinking, oh, this is great. The, the bears are finally in charge. No, bears can't be in charge until they actually break through support. Think of it like a football game, you know, offense and defense. Right now, you know, the offense is still in place here until they create the fumble. And the fumble is a close below. Right now, 2881 uh, would be the number. Uh, and so that's a kind of a beautiful thing, because otherwise we would have had to have waited from a daily profile if this profile forms to 286013 to know whether or not that is, in fact, the case out there. So, uh, Jay, uh, Peter, I hope that helps you out. We'll have to come back and take a look at this manana to see if, in fact, this is a profile that, in fact, holds up and forms today. No new profiles uh, in the other contracts out here. Uh, we've got the Dow Equity Futures contract. That continues to run into resistance at the top of its box, which is 26,509. Doesn't mean it's bearish. And if we look at the Dow Equity Futures contract out here, uh, we don't have a key reversal session. We just actually have an inside day. And neither the high or low was tested yesterday. But if we did get a bearish close today, bearish candle could easily take place, um, that could indicate a top because this too – Price has been moving higher, doing less relative energy, only in wave number four uh, to the upside out here. So that's the Dow. So that's potential. But in the case of the Dow versus the ES Mini, it's got a lot longer to go to the downside before it tests support, which is 26017. In the case of the NQ, uh, the NQ is just continues to motor higher out there. Now it's motoring higher. It's doing a less relative energy, but it's trading above Stevie's green line. Uh, there's no reason for this not to, at least as of 146 in the afternoon, not to move up to its price projection target of J to B equals CD, which is in the 78 55 level. That's the call until the market communicates something else to you and I. So in essence, there are your equity futures contracts. That's what Stevie sees. Now, the, with regard to the, the strength or weakness in the market, we can just take a quick peek in on the New York Stock Exchange. We are going to see that it's faltering a tad, meaning that simply it's advanced decline oscillator reading. That is panel two reads minus 21 and change right now. If you're watching this on Tiger TV, it is below zero. Minus 21, obviously below zero. If not obvious, it is now obvious. It, it, obvious. And if we take a look at what what does that mean, jelly bean? Uh, this is the jelly bean time of the year out here. And uh, I will tell you, it doesn't mean anything today unless there's follow through tomorrow. And it doesn't really really mean a lot at 147. It, 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 it really means more when we get to the four o'clock bell out there. But it is showing some weakness. Uh, is it major weakness? It is not major weakness. Why? Because if you look at the bottom panel of the screen, what we can see is the spot volatility next 50 day exponential moving average price at 1469. We're at 1253, quite a ways away from that. Just as a double check out there, that we would just go peek in on the HYG just to see how it is holding out. Just one of those high yield corporate uh, bond funds. It is moving lower. Is the HYG generated any kind of a top? That's really the question out there because what that this can do it. Oh, no, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. It hasn't. It hasn't. It hasn't. I don't see it, so I'm not going to waste your time and pull that over. So right now I've got to go with a kind of a neutral call with regard to HYG. So let's go see what Brent in Martinez, California wanted to look at. He said, uh, could we uh, take a gander? I like that. We'll take a gander at uh, TGB. Looks like it may be getting above an area of resistance. Has had nice volume the last few days, and uh, you're welcome, uh, uh, Brent, out there, and best to you also. So T uh, Tseko Mines is TGB out here, and uh, so Brent is certainly right. Volume over the last uh, uh, four days. I looked quickly to see if I could find some news that was behind this. I didn't see it. Maybe there's some news. Maybe there isn't. But you can see the volume breakout that uh, Brent is referring to out here. And, in fact, from a volume breakout standpoint, this would – uh, be a confirmed A to B equals CD. I think the low is approximately the December 31st level. Looks like the high might be February 27th. I may not have this exact, but it's going to be close enough, I think, for our 
uh, move out here. And this would suggest, Brent, uh, 84 cents, 92 cents. Uh, those are A to B equals CD targets. We've got the confirmation. But before, but before we leave it there, this is the daily time frame chart. And I think it would be incumbent upon you and I to look at other charts out here, such as the weekly. Now, in the case of the weekly, we can see that this is traded up into resistance. That's the top of the weekly profile. 76 cents. We're trading at 77 cents right now. So from a weekly standpoint, and there has not been a close above the top of a weekly profile in what seems like forever, and forever takes us back into January of 2018. That's pretty close to forever. From a trading standpoint, I, I think you want to see how Tseko Mines closes at the end of the week out here. If if it closes back below 76 cents, resistance is held. And um, I'll tell you what, during the breakout here, I'm going to pull up Tseko Mines. Now, I'm going to say, Brent, because I know we've got something else to uh, look at out here. That's the resistance level you need to see it close above come tomorrow. Hope you're right. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's finish out the, uh, the show here by taking a look at the NDX 100, the QQQ series, the TQQQ, as Earl writes in. And um, uh, Earl, with regard to your question, which is, hey, the Qs hit a new all-time high today, but the TQQQ didn't, you know, does that mean the TQQQQQQQ, uh, you know, price is at a new high? 
I would say the way that you need to trade the triples and so forth because of the way that they uh, rebalance uh, each day, um, you just have to trade the TQQ off of either the NQ or the NDX100 or the QQQ series. But but here's what we do know. So, you know, thank you for bringing it to the light of uh, all the tigers and tigresses out here. Here's what we know right now. And we've talked about 100% moves of a move. Uh, I mean, that can be where an equity simply tires out, tops out, and so forth. Well, in the case of the NDX100, which is what's up on the screen right now, you're going to see two numbers out here, 7691 and 7700. Those are two previous swing point highs, those going back into the trading session of August 30th and uh, October the uh, 1st out here. We can see it's been tested. We can see prices moving uh, below that top. Uh, Volume-wise out here, let's, oops, let's check in on the QQQ series ETF. Let me see if I can uh, open up the volume metric here real quickly before we have to get off air. Here we go. So volume-wise back there in the queues, it was 27 million shares. You're at 17, and it was 29 million shares. You're at 17. So looks to me like price is moving up with pretty decent volume. Again, the NQ, Earl, the best I can say is at this stage here, hey, price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. It says the Hair on the back of your neck should stand up a bit. It's not a signal that says you've got a jettison your long trade, if that's what you're in, and I'm assuming you are. The NQ could uh, easily target 78.55 out there. If at the end of today we get some type of bearish reversal signal, that would be a different uh, piece of information. We just have to wait. But what's the information at 156 in the afternoon? Yep, you've made 100% move a move. Got to be careful. Wait to see if there's a bearish reversal signal. If not, Volume-wise, looks like it's pushing higher with volume. Hey, folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. David White is up uh, next, your favorite polar bear. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Have a terrific Wednesday.